friends. We've only gone out together three times, and already you're telling me you just want to be friends? You never gave me a chance, and for that, you'll fry like a pork sausage. It's not that I don't like you, it's just that, well, you're too nice a guy, I guess. I think I'd rather go out with someone more of the unpredictable. Hello. This doesn't look like the Lincoln Tunnel, Sam. Looks to me like a marginally volatile hostage situation, Max. Ooh, does this mean we get to kick some puffy white mad scientist butt? Can't think of a reason not to. You'll be of no use, freelance police. With the flip of a lever, my ungrateful lunch date will be reduced to a half cup of disoriented atomic matter. I knew he wasn't a real doctor. Uh, shall I confront, subdue, and pummel the suspected perpetrator, Sam? Sick him up, little buddy. Ooh! Ow! Hey, nice one. Yikes! Huh? He's not a real guy, Sam. Can I keep his head for a souvenir? Why do you suppose it's ticking? That's no head, Max. It's one damned ugly time bomb. Let's leave this criminal cesspool pronto. Good idea, Sam. Maybe we can ditch the head somewhere while the credits are running. Mind if I drive? Not if you don't mind me clawing at the dash and shrieking like a cheerleader. Sam, is pronto a real word? Goodbye, Sam and Max. I'll never forget all you've done here today. That was a pleasantly understated credit sequence. I enjoyed the cheesy retro ambiance. What the hell are you talking about, Max? Sam, either termites are burrowing through my skull, or one of us is ticking. Oops, oh yeah. Max, where should I put this so it doesn't hurt anyone we know or care about? Out the window, Sam. There's nothing but strangers out there. I hope there was nobody on that bus. Nobody we know, at least. Hello? Yes? 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 No! Really? Well, the same to you, Mac. Another confused census taker? Actually, it was the commissioner with another idiotic and baffling assignment. Does it involve wanton destruction? We can only hope. 
Due to the arbitrarily sensitive nature of the mission, we'll be meeting a bonded city courier out on the street. Ooh, smells like a fiercely thickening plot. Oh boy, we've got a message. Gee, I hope it's something eerily provocative. Hello, is this a St. Francis pie shop? I'd like to order 200 lemon meringue pies and a small diet cola. <laughs> I wonder if the pie shop gets calls reporting machete-wielding intruders. It's Max's Roach Farm. Cash, never leave home without it. Yeah, we may need it to bribe slippery government officials. You want a piece of me, huh? Well, take a piece of this. Brutal. But very true to life. And here's one for your old man. I really respect Flint's business acumen. Please, Sam, don't use the word acumen again. Guess he had it coming to him. Gratuitous acts of senseless violence are my forte. You're such an adorable urchin, Max. Oh, it's a cute little hypercephalic kitten. I am repulsed by his bulging eyes. Hey there, little fella. You talking to me? Maybe. Are you a cleverly disguised bonded city courier? Maybe. Are you the freelance police? Yes, but don't go blabbing it to everybody. I think he's kinda cute, Sam. Can I make a tennis racket out of him? Maybe later, Max. Right now we've got a message from the commissioner to collect. Oh yeah, right. Sorry guys, I swallowed your orders for safekeeping. But now I can't seem to hock them back up. Hey there, little fella. You talking to me? Your head is disturbingly disproportionate to your body. It's a vocal cord. You'd be amazed how much room they take up. It's my little buddy, ready for action. I just love to turn this guy inside out. Ooh, that gives me an idea. According to these orders, something bizarre is happening at the carnival. I thought that was the whole point. Maybe we should check it out when we've got nothing better to do, like guinea time. Thank you.
It's a carousel of bootleg Sam and Max paint by number books. I gotta go to the. It's a box of pecan flavored candies. I don't think he'd want that. You're awfully cheery for a minimum wage earner. All Snucky U graduates have completed courses in excessive and unwarranted cheerfulness. But enough about me. What can I do for you? I'd like to buy this. Do you have any money? Of course I do. Here. Will that be all for you today? That'll be all. Anything else? Snucky you. Is that in the pack tin? I think it's a distant cousin of the caribou, Sam. No, no, no. Snucky you is where all Snucky's employees are sent to learn the ins, the outs, the ups, the downs, the overs, and the unders of the amazing gastronomical and cultural phenomenon that is Snucky's. Fascinating. No, it's not. Humoring. At Snucky you we're given intensive courses in patty pounding, choosing the right button for soft drinks, and the all-important pickle jar opening. I had no idea you were so rigorously trained. Hey, I can open any jar in the country. Cool. No, it's not. Now, how can I put all that snucky you training to use for you? My little buddy has to use the facilities. Facilities be damned. I need a bathroom. They're in the back. Here's the key. There's an awfully big rasp attached to that keychain. Out of toilet paper? Nah, we just had problems with thugs stealing our restroom keys. They're the cleanest in nine counties. The keys? The restrooms. You need some help, little buddy? I think I can handle this myself, Sam. Now, anything else I can do for you? Nothing. You have no idea how often I hear that. Max! Hey, Max! What? I think we should keep the rasp. You're probably right. No one deserves to use restrooms that clean. You're looking hale and hearty, little buddy. I'm a coffee achiever, Sam. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10, and I don't know why. Me too. This mission's giving me the heebie-jeebies. You can get a lotion for that, Sam. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. But it makes a pretty good milkshake. What's a good word, little buddy? Synergy. What's a good word, little buddy? <coughs> this mission's giving me the heebie-jeebies. You can get a lotion for that, Sam. Well, that's all. Tom Nation and Blimey, he ain't here. So now what do we do? Now? Now we get in the bus and look for him, you idiot. I knew that. Uh. Get out of Mr. Bumpus way, you partially clad varmints. Who was that? I don't know, but if it weren't for the carefree innocence of this carnival, I'd be breaking his kneecaps. You're a demonic little imp, Max. If you let us in, we'll get you an antacid. Sorry, boys, we are closed. I can't let you in. Insurance reasons, you know. Who are those misanthropes at the gate? Which misanthropes? The short one with the bad hairpiece, and the tall one with the dark, flinty eyes. Hey, I just work here. Anything else? Let us in, holy old breath. Nope. Let us in, holy old breath. Nope. I'll be back. I can hardly wait. Check this out, Jack. We're the freelance police. Here's our authorization to be here. Now let us in before we replace you with a cheap renewable fuel source. Let me run this by the boss.
Uh, I guess you can go in. But be careful. Cannibals can be dangerous to your health. Ho, ho, ho. That was needlessly cryptic. I'd be peeing my pants if I wore any. Everything seems to be in order here. Sam, look over there. How dare you call in the authorities without consulting me? Well, I tried talking to you, but you were off wallowing in your own self-pity. Yeah, but it's them. Hi, I'm Shep Cushman, and this is my brother Burl. Welcome to our carnival. What's left of it? I'm Sam. He's Max. We savagely protect the rights of innocence. Even cruelly twisted ones such as yourself. Selves. Whatever. Well, you sound like just the guys to solve our little problem. Walk this way. See this melted block of ice? How could we miss it? This used to be our main attraction. Your main attraction was a block of ice? Don't be dense. Our main attraction was a genuine, authentic, real-life Bigfoot on ice. Hey, let me get this straight. You want us to go traipsing all over the country looking for a soggy Bigfoot? I've never been traipsing before. Does it hurt? But Bruno must be returned to us. He's a brutish, ignorant beast with no sense of right or wrong. Hey, who isn't? Besides, he's kidnapped our second main attraction. Is that the block of ice? No, it's Trixie the giraffe neck girl from Scranton. She disappeared at the same time Bruno did. We can only assume that the monster took her when he made his escape. I guess Max and I could search for your missing freaks, but we'll need free run of the carnival to look for clues. Yeah, and free corn dogs, so we can uke all over ourselves. No problem. Here's an all-day free pass. Leave everything to us, and we'll have those abominations of nature back in your protective care before you can read the Koran. Didn't he fight Godzilla? Hey, Cushmans! Uh, what do you want? Is there anything else you can tell us about your escaped Bigfoot? Well... He's our Bigfoot. He's escaped. He's a menace to society. What more could you possibly need to know? He's right, Sam. I don't think my colossal head could retain any more knowledge. What can you tell us about Trixie? She's a very caring, sensitive young woman. If you care about that kind of stuff. She used to sing folk songs to the other freaks in her trailer. You ever heard a Scrantonese folk song? No. You don't want to. Oh, there was one other thing. She likes her men like the Statue of Liberty. Green and rusty? Tall and dense. Who are those guys we bumped into out by the gate? Uh, what guys? One was a short guy with big hair. The other one was a tall guy with big hands. Oh, you must be talking about internationally renowned recording star Conroy Bumpus. And his assistant Lee Harvey. Bumpus? Who's Conroy Bumpus? He's a loon. Insane. And the country and western singer The Boot. He actually wanted to buy Bruno and Trixie from us. Boy, was he steam when he found out that we didn't have them anymore. Where do you buy your clothes, anyway? These aren't clothes. Our skin is naturally green and vinyl-like. Good Lord! He's buck naked! So are you. Yeah, but I'm cute and marketable. Well, it's back to the Bigfoot hunt. He looks delicious. He's a nice guy, but sort of a drip. How Kafkaesque. So this is what happens to unsuccessful third-party presidential candidates. It's Max. Doesn't that hurt? A lot. I suppose there's a trick to eat. I just haven't been able to figure it out. Your ineptitude gives hope to all of us further down on the food chain. Is there anything else I can do for you? Did you ever talk to Bruno before he escaped? How could I? He was in a block of ice. What do you know about Trixie? 
Absolutely nothing. We never talk to each other. Ever. Are you sure you don't know anything about Conroy, Bumpus? He is a country singer, right? Sorry, but I don't know much about him. I'm more of a mumbo fan. Anything else? I bet you can't make flame shoot out of your butt. Take a hike. Amateur. I bet you can't make your flames reach the top of the tent. Watch me, Jojo. Anything else? Nah. Good. It's a wholesome whack -a rat game. I want something. Hey, this crummy prize doesn't come with any light bulb. It fits perfectly. Excuse us. We need some help, and although you seem dangerously unequipped brain-wise, we've come to you for advice. Huh? What do you know about Bruno the Bigfoot? Who wants to know? We're the freelance police, and we're in a race against time. And we're barefoot. All I know about Bruno is what the Cushmans tell me. Well, that was useless. You might want to try the Tunnel of Love, though. Rumor has it that one of Bruno's buddies hangs out in there. Ooh, let's go, Sam. Oh, hush. Do you have any idea what happened to Trixie? Trixie, the giraffe girl from Scranton? No, Trixie, the talkative poodle. She's my best customer. She used to ride the cone of tragedy for hours on end. I loved the way her neck used to whip back and forth when I cranked it up to full speed. Your sadism is a credit to your profession. Do you guys all go to the same tattoo parlor or what? Actually, these aren't tattoos. It's my natural skin. Do you guys all go to the same tattoo parlor? Actually... Me and my partner want to ride the cone of tragedy. That's right. We've lost our will to live. I'm not supposed to, but what the heck. You two look like a couple of caring, non-litigious mammals. Strap yourselves in, and I'll turn on the cone. Ooh, I feel tragically empty. Me too. It's as though an integral part of my essence has been ripped from my being. Let's do it again. Maybe later, chum. Hey, what happened to my carefully collected box of useless junk? Hey, carny boy. What? 
Where'd all my cool junk go? It must have fallen out of your coat while you were on the ride. Here's a claim ticket. Take it to the lost and found. Holy cripes on toast! Nothing personal, but you're the single ugliest thing we've ever seen! Well, there was that computer game developers conference. Have you lost something? I've lost a whole bunch of neat junk. You must have been gifted with psychic powers to make up your obvious physical shortcomings. Bad deal. Have you got a claim ticket? Sure. Wait here while I search through the back room. <laughs> Well, here's all the stuff we've collected off the Kono tragedy today. It's all yours. I feel whole again. It's a powerful refrigerator magnet that says World of Fish on its side. I wonder how that got in there. Tunnel of Love Wanna ride the Tunnel of Love? Yippee! That's probably a that's probably a good idea. I should have tried it soon. That's probably a good idea. I should have tried it soon. That's probably a good idea. I should have tried it sooner. My little body's covered with swan pimples. Wanna ride the Tunnel of Love again? Why not? That's a good idea. Maybe I should try it when I'm a little closer to the fuse box. Hmm. Get off of there, Max. Why? Check this out. I'll never shave again. You never did.
couches spot us in his native habitat. Who are you? I'm Doug, the Mole Man. Who are you? I'm Sam. He's Max. We fight crime. And we like long walks along the beach. What do you want from me? Do you know anything about Bruno the Sasquatch? Bruno the Sasquatch? Why, the stories I could tell you. Stop him, Sam. He's gonna tell us a story. I first met Bruno 25 years ago in Saigon. And then there was the time we all had our taxes done by a platypus, and... Shut up! For God's sake, just shut up! Look, we just want to know where Bruno is now. Gee, I have no idea where he went. Maybe you should talk to my uncle. Your uncle? Yeah, my uncle Shavul. He's really into Bigfoots. When I was a kid, he used to tell me stories about giant Bigfoot parties, where all the Bigfoots of the world would get together and dance Bigfoot dances and... That's great, kid. Where can we find your uncle? I don't know. He disappeared a short time after he helped build the largest ball of twine on Earth. I think I may weep openly. Look, you two seem trustworthy. Oh, we are. Yes, you can trust us as far as we can throw you. So if you bring me some pecan-flavored candy, I'll give you my key to Trixie's trailer. I'll also tell you a big secret about how Bruno escaped. Why not tell us now? Because I'm hungry. You know, watching too much TV is super bad for the eyes. Why do all you squishy, poorly focused blobs say that? Never mind. Here, I thought you might like some candy. Thanks. Picard's my favorite. Hey, you're all right. Take this key as a token of my appreciation. Wow, this is some key. Okay, Sam, let's get the hell out of here. Wait, I've got a great story you should hear. <sighs> Keep it short, kid. My partner's got a low tolerance for long stories. Well, it all started the day before today. I remember it like it was yesterday. It's not widely known, but Trixie had fallen in love with Bruno. Every night, she'd sneak into the freak show tent and read to him what she imagined to be his favorite bedtime stories. She seemed as happy as a self-mutilated parody of nature could be. But she could never truly be happy until her beloved Bruno was free. Finally, she decided to do something about Bruno's predicament. She begged Flambe, the fire breather, to free the Bigfoot from his icy cage. Flambe took pity on poor Trixie and liberated Bruno. And the happy couple haven't been seen since. Hell of a story, ain't it? There, that should get things running again. Hey Max, come here. What? Watch this. Well, this is undignified. Oh, boy! It's a big closet. Trixie's a big girl. Ooh, they're genuine Scrantonese potions of fertility. Let's take them. I don't think we should risk being any more fertile than we already are, Max. Hey, there's a neat costume in here.
It's a scorecard from the Gator Golf Emporium in Rumi Eyes, Florida. That must hurt. It does. Is there anything else I can do for you? How'd Trixie talk you into freeing Bruno? She charmed me with her feminine wiles. She also promised to pay me 20 bucks. You can drop the act. We know it was your kerosene-soaked breath that freed Bruno. And we know that you sometimes go for days on the same pair of socks. Okay, you cut me. Just don't tell my bosses. Maybe we should rat him out, Sam. The thought of him out in the streets drinking lighter fluid seems somehow ironic. It's scary to watch you wrestle with abstract concepts, Max. Nah. Good. I hear a distant rumbling. You should have thought of that before we left. Weird. Not that I care, but what made you think of putting alligators and golf together? I didn't. Fact is, this place used to be a miniature golf course. Then, back in 89, the swamp flooded the whole shooting match, windmills and all. Next thing I knew, I had a half-submerged miniature golf course crawling with ten-foot-long gators. I hate when that happens. Tell me about it. So I turned the golf course into a driving range. Hmm, I've got an inexplicable urge to buy some suitcases. Don't even joke about it, city boy. So what kind of handicap does your average Bigfoot have? Bigfoots? Don't get me started about Bigfoots. I used to have a Bigfoot. He was my star attraction. I'm beginning to sense a theme here. I kept him fed and sheltered, and how does he repay me? In tens and twenties? No, he ran away. Did he have help? Well, someone must have given him that there acetylene torch to cut through his protective ankle wear. Protective ankle wear? Okay, shackles. What do you think of Conroy Bumpus? Conroy Bumpus? He's my idol. I've named all my kids and pets after him. I built a beer can shrine to him in the garage. I live for the day when I can meet him in person. Why do you ask? Uh, no reason. Don't go anywhere. Where would I go? Max, let's go. And the proprietor has no idea what happened to his Bigfoot? That's what he said, Mr. Bumpus. You know, Lee Harvey, I'm beginning to think that vast, unseen forces are aligned against my quest for a Bigfoot. Ditto. Ditto? <sighs> hey, 
Hey, look it. It's those two, uh, what was that word, Sam? Misanthropes? Yeah, misanthropes. What are you, anyway, the president of the hair club for short people? This is Mr. Conroy Bumpus, famed country and western star. I'd suggest you show him some respect. Yeah, well, he looks like a lounge lizard to me. And I'll bet his scalp itches from that bad rug. Maybe you should watch yourself, little furball. Yeah, well, I've got more hair on my fuzzy little butt than you do on that hollow country head of yours. Okay, I've had enough. Nobody makes fun of my hair. Hold still, you flea-bitten polecat. Here you go, boss. What a jerk. It's a nice five iron, though. Yeah, can't dunk me. You've made a path across the driving range. Geez, that certainly took long enough. Shut up, Max. I hate that game. Is that because you're a lousy golfer? You're an irritable bunny today, aren't you? Yeah, well, why don't you try sitting in this smelly booth while I beat the hell out of helpless fish? Maybe I should just leave you there. Did I mention what a lousy golfer you were? You suck, Sam.
Hey, Sam. Hey, what? I found another sample of Sasquatch fur in mange in the booth. While I spent my young life waiting, just sitting there, in that horrible booth, waiting. Jeez, Max, get over it. Okay. Here, you carry it. I'd better. I'm not sure where you'd put it. That's none of your business, Sam. Can we go, Sam? This place still gives me the creeps. It's a snow globe from the Mystery Vortex in scenic Goldwump, Washington. Let me see! Take a look. Too bad it's empty or we could shake it. Like this? Yeah. What's that writing on the bottom of the globe? To Elmo the Bigfoot. Keep on trucking. Shavuul the Mole Man. Hey, maybe Shavuul's at the Mystery Vortex. Let's go there before I'm distracted by something. Hey, can you open this for me? Sure. Ain't a jar made I can't open. It's a 1 200,000th scale model of the actual ball of twine. And it's only 1 200,000th as stupid as the actual ball of twine. According to the plaque, this is a shaving from the first foot of the ball of twine. I didn't know it was old enough to shave. Fun facts about the world's largest ball of twine. If laid out from end to end, the ball would stretch from here to the far side of Jupiter. Also, scientists theorize that by 2053, the sheer weight of the ball will push the Earth out of its orbit, propelling our planet on a collision course with the Sun. Good thing my life expectancy is only six years. Way to take the short view, little buddy. Now there's something you don't see every day. What the hell are you talking about, Sam? We dump our fish heads out the window all the time. Yeah, but these are halibut. Shouldn't you be posing for a painting with a pitchfork? Can I help you? You haven't seen an eight-foot-tall woodland creature answering to the name of Bruno around here, have you? Are you talking about Bruno the Bigfoot? Yeah. He and a bunch of other Bigfoots helped build the ball of twine back in 56. Why, the stories I could tell. No! I've heard enough stories today. Have you seen Bruno recently? I haven't seen Bruno in 30 or so years. Is he in trouble? That depends on your definition. I like to use the one that involves spiny echidnae. 
Well, is there anything else I can help you with? What's with all the fish guts flying past the window? Those are leftovers from our last fish delivery. Our famous rotating restaurant has fresh fish flown in every day from the world of fish in Mosquitoville, Missouri. Has Conroy Bumpus passed through here? Who's that? He's a country western star gone berserk with power. I wouldn't know him if I saw him. I don't get out much. This ball isn't really made from a continuous piece of twine, is it? Uh, yep, it's the longest piece of twine in the world by 92 yards. It's places like this that make me wish I were Canadian. Well, they've got one of these too, but half of it's French. That'll be all for now. That was wholesome. Not to mention physically improbable. Shake a leg, Max. Hey, look! That's one long loose end. Too bad we can't reach it from this side of the deck. You always need a large piece of string in games like this. You know, you could go blind if you keep staring at things like that. I'm f concentrating. Should I even bother asking you about Conroy Bumpus? F no. Have you heard anything about Bruno the Bigfoot? Who the f is Bruno the Bigfoot? Sam, he's speaking in tongues! Percent sign, hammer sand, dollar sign. And colon, semicolon, too! What are you f***ing doing? Swearing in longhand, asterisk mouth. What you doing? Using my telekinetic powers to bend my tools. Why? To help me fix the rotating mechanism on this f***ing diner. Well, that makes sense. What are these malformed tools good for? Lots of things. Like scratching those hard to reach places. Every place is hard for me to reach. Would you like a free sample? Sure. Just let me finish this one. All done. Thanks. Well, bye. It's a conveniently located pair of mounted binoculars. I can't pick that up. I can't pick that up. I can't pick that up. of the diner via these mounted binoculars. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Oh, maybe not. I've got to use this elevator.
That did the trick. It's kind of wobbly in here. Hey, Max, come here. Geronimo! One must admire the skill with which the wily uber trout stalks its prey. This is one of the ten most liberating experiences of my life, Sam. Holy mackerel! I'm a trout, stupid. Holy trout! I'd always thought you were made of plaster. Now what do we do, Sam? I'm thinking. What's that noise? It sounds like you do when you've eaten too much Thai food, Sam. I told you I had a plan. Hey, Max, I've got another plan. I think I liked you better when you were clueless. Shut up and climb over the rail. See? That wasn't so bad. What are you two doing out here? Any more bright ideas? Let's start crying like babies. Galileo was wrong. I don't think we were in a vacuum, Max. Hey, how will we get our car back? Wait for it. Sam, this place is making my head ping. That's probably just the metal plate in your head. Gravity's taken a holiday and lost its luggage. That's not what I'm about to lose. I think I'm gonna throw up. Throw down? Whatever. Stealth gib to oba wonk oi odd ta. I'm upside down, cutie, not dyslexic. Oh. I'm looking for a Bigfoot. You too? I used to have a Bigfoot in that black of ice over there. Yesterday, I stepped out to have my spine recompressed, and when I got back, he was gone. Spine recompression? Cool. Do you know who Conroy Bumpus is? Yes, and he was here looking for a Bigfoot. 
Then he got sick and had to leave. This place seems to have that effect on people. Do you sell any snow globes like this one? We used to, but not anymore. Why not? Because they were having an inexplicably bad effect on the vortex. With every new snow globe we built, the vortex got weaker and weaker. The same thing happens when I watch sitcoms. So we decided to discontinue the snow globes for financial reasons. I guess this means you don't have any snow globe stoppers. You got it. Are you feeling as mentally unstable as I am? More so. It'll wear off in a few hours. Don't you get tired of always hanging around here? I'm fine as long as I keep denying the urge to fall or jump. We'll be back. Back, front, it's all the same to me. It's another tuft of Sasquatch hair and mange. My rabbity senses tell me that this is not Bruno's hair and mange. Or maybe I'm in love. Wow! The mystery vortex is controlled by giant magnets buried under the Earth's crust. I'm strangely saddened by our callous shattering of a cherished American myth. Get over it. Okay. It's a forest of shoe trees. I'm afraid, Sam. Let's get out of here. It's a forest of shoe trees. I'm afraid, Sam. Let's get out of here.
Who are you? I'm Sam. He's Max. We bust punks. And we're overachievers. That's cool, man. I'm Shavul. What do you want with me? Hey, Sam, look! Well, this bottled water is a real letdown. We want to pick your brain. Ooh, ooh, let me pick it, Sam. What do you know about Bruno? Bruno the Bigfoot? Why do people keep asking that question? Bruno and I go way back. I've always felt a special kinship with Bigfoots. I feel the same way about pointy sticks. Shh! I haven't thought about Bruno for years. Allow me a moment to karmically link myself to him. If you must. Hold on. I'm getting something. I see Frog Rock. Between the enchanted Argyle Forest and the inexplicable Valley of Lights. Wait, man. Bruno's in trouble. It's like several voices screaming out in terror and then suddenly silenced. Sorry, guys, but I can't get a clear psychic image of Bruno. The sad truth is that I haven't been able to concentrate very well since I lost my mood ring in the biggest ball of twine in the world. If you find it for me, maybe I can help you. One, two, three. What are we fighting for? Just checking. Is this your ring? Cool, man. Have you found Frog Rock yet? No, but I don't see how finding it's going to get me any closer to finding Bruno. Finding Frog Rock's only the beginning, man. Once you're at Frog Rock, you'll need some samples. Samples? Yeah, man. Bigfoot samples. You know, fur and stuff. Three of them. Smear them all over Frog Rock. Put the fur on the rock. Got it. Let's go, Max. Wait. You'll also need some Mystic Mole Man powder. You must be joking. No joke, man. Here, I'll get you some. Here you go. Sprinkle this Mystic Mole Man powder over the fur when you've smeared it all over Frog Rock. What'll happen then? Something wonderful. Thanks. Let's go, Max. Take a leg, Max.
Okay, I've lodged the magnifying lens in front of the mounted binoculars. Mount Badrich. It's a rock. It's the inexplicable valley of lights. Hmm, it's a rock. And it's between the two things Shavuul said it was between. It must be frog rock. That's the enchanted Argyle Forest. Why, it's the eternal plain of acid rain. Hmm, the largest stump in the world. Mount Badrich. I think I can see Frog Rock. This doesn't look like a frog at all. My innocence has been shattered by this blatant tourist trap. I want my money back. We didn't pay anything. Well, somebody better give me some money. That's gross, Sam. That's gross, Sam. Well? Wait for it. Sure gets dark quickly around here. I don't think this is a natural occurrence, Max. In fact, I think we're witnessing a celestial convergence of some sort. Do you think it'll make that rock look more like a frog? This means something, Sam. It's a Conroy world after all. If we ever get this rich and famous, I want you to shoot me, Sam. It'll be a pleasure. Cripes! Hey Max, take a look at this! It's titled Me, Myself and I. 
Hey, you learned how to read. Wow! It's Monster Truck Weekend! Happening every Sunday. Sunday! Sunday. Okay, I'm over the shock now. I'm not, but I'm sure my gentle naivete will survive. It looks like an official macro hard maintenance droid manual. If I had the slightest inclination to strain myself, I could probably reach it. However, I'm sure I can drag this out into a longer yet more satisfying experience. What you doing? Hang back, buddy, and observe my magic. Oops. Find out all you need to know? Maybe. I got a little lost in the troubleshooting chapter. It's one of Conroy's toupees. Howdy, partners. I'm Conroy Bumpus, and welcome to Bumpusville. Feel free to wander the mansion, but for Pete's sake, don't touch anything. Howdy, partners. I'm Conroy Bumpus, and welcome to Bumpusville. Feel free to wander the mansion. It's a portrait of John Muir. Say, Sam, just who is John Muir? Who's John Muir? Hey, guys, this dope doesn't know who John Muir is. You gotta be kidding! What a maroon! What a dib cow poop. Sam, the dead animal heads are talking to me. Where? Up there! Well? But... You really shouldn't tell fibs about dead animals, Max. But... Stop bugging me. I'm admiring this portrait of John Muir. But who's John Muir? Do you really want to know? If you'll stop talking, sure. Okay. Hit it, boys. There once was a man named John Muir. A naturalist, noble and pure. His love for all beasties. The most and the leasties. Has never been equaled. Uh... For sure. A stunning portrait of John Muir, famous naturalist. Bumpusville is proud to present the master of melody, the king of country, Mr. Entertainment, Conroy Bumpus. I hate floor shows. I remember my childhood in Brighton When dear old dad would bounce me on his knee He'd say, son, there ain't nothing as exciting As exposing beasts to inhumanity That's why I Happy to be king of the creatures I'm proud to be the lord of the old I love collecting things with grotesque features 
chairs. It makes me feel like some child and God. Oh, I trapped my first tiger before I could speak. Killed me a bear when I was free. And now with this Bigfoot and giraffe neck freak, I finally have a full menagerie. Hit it, boys! That's why. Western Star Thank you, thank you. Your attention, please. Conroy Bubbis has left the building. Uh-oh. What in the name of Jethro Clampett's going on here? Ow! That tickle! Knock it off! <laughs> and stay out! I can't use these things together. Now that I've read that ponderous manual, I can move the robot around like this. I'm impressed. That's nothing. Watch this. That was gratuitous. Sorry. This might be more useful. I don't think the cute little robot wants to follow its new programming, Sam. I don't recall giving it a cute little choice. There he goes. I'm ripe with anticipation. I thought I smelled something. What the? How Pavlovian. And you should know. This is virtual reality? I may be sick.
Well, I am the key master. Does that come with a dental plan? I don't know what you two critters are up to, but I want you out of here. Now! Gee, thanks. Well, back to the circus with you. I'm feeling a little morally conflicted about taking Bruno back to the circus. I'm not. Let's go, you big lug. Stay away from him, you malefactor. I'm not a malefactor. I'm a Ligomorph. Look, I'm not going back to the circus, and I'm late for a party. Oh, yeah, the Bigfoot party. Where is it? It's at Evelyn Morrison Savage Jungle in, in picturesque Half-Life, Nevada. Bigfoots. And their dates? Only. Let's go. This place is tiki-rific. Tiki-rific? Yeah, I feel immersed in native culture. I just hope this place has authentic savage tiki drinks with that authentic tiki tang. She looks familiar. Hey, you're Evelyn Morrison, famed B-movie star. Yes? I am she. I've seen all your movies. My favorite was Robot Terror from Beyond the Galaxy. Is that the one where the alien says, Clam do Beretta Nimno? No, that's Vampirus in Prison. Oh, yeah. Would you like Evelyn Morrison's autograph? Actually, we just want to ask a few questions. Evelyn Morrison is always available for interviews. I have the sudden craving for an umbrella drink. Evelyn Morrison's Jungle Inn has the greatest umbrella drinks in the world, with over 237 kinds of rum. All in just one drink? Which way to the bar? Take it easy, Max. You don't even drink. Oh, yeah. The toucan must have put words into my mouth. How'd you end up in the hotel business? I bet it was a sordid combination of fast cars and fast living. Vroom, vroom. It was the stars. Bigger movie stars than you? Pshaw. Pshaw? No, the stars didn't get bigger. The rubber monsters got smaller. I still say it was a lurid tale of sin and depravity. Have you had any problems with the Bigfoots? Evelyn Morrison has always worked well with grotesque creatures of the night. I'll take that as a no, then. You haven't seen a short, self-absorbed, crazy-as-a-bedbug country western singing star around here, have you? If you mean Conroy Bumpus, Evelyn Morrison had him ejected from the premises hours ago. Why? He was harassing Evelyn Morrison's guests. I'll get back to you later. Evelyn Morrison will be here. In the meantime, why not take some of these brochures? They have Evelyn Morrison's autograph on them, making them must-have collectibles. Thanks. I remember seeing this movie in theaters when I was a pup. 
During the climactic scene, they drop giant rubber snakes on the audience. Why don't they make movies like that anymore? Higher standards? Probably. Hmm. I hate it when you hum, Sam. It sounds like a high voltage tower. These are pamphlets for the Mount Rushmore Dinosaur Tar Pit and Bungee Jumping National Park in North Dakota. And some place called the Celebrity Vegetable Museum in Goat Liver, Texas. I think I like the humming better. What detail? See the carrot leaning out of the book depository? Never mind that. What about the string beans behind the fence on the grassy knoll? This is a monument to human ingenuity. Thanks bunches, sonny. How late are you open? As late as you want. Gotta grab the sales when you can in this business. So what's the biggest thing in vegetable celebrities right now? I can't believe I lived long enough to hear you say that, Sam. You may not believe this, Sonny, but the biggest thing right now is miniaturization. Miniaturization? Peas. Peas? I know. Possible. All we are saying is give peas a chance. So what do you know about Bigfoots? Well, they don't translate well into vegetables. I have been experimenting with the idea for a while. There's just no such thing as a furry vegetable. Check out our fridge. What prompted that batch of Conroy heads over there? Well, I was trying a new growth hormone for some of my more distinguished personalities when I realized it was no good. Now it won't stop. They just keep growing like that. Big misshapen growths on top. Reminded me of Conroy Bumpus, so I ran a special. Well, bye. What do you make of this? Famed naturalist John Muir, huh? This looks like a zucchini squash to me. I can do this, but it'll take a short while. Remaindered Conroy Bumpus eggplants. I guess his 15 minutes of fame are about up. Look, a 70 million year old statue with no graffiti. I thought it was missing something. Where's the crayons? No way. Why not? You're artistically inept. Can I just paint his toenails red? Maybe later. I've seen hair like this somewhere before. Your butt? No, this hair has the same coarseness as Sasquatch hair. You don't suppose they skin Sasquatches to make this cheesy roadside attraction? Who knows? More importantly, who cares? Hey, Max. Hey, what? I've got a job for those mighty incisors of yours. What? See that woolly mammoth? What about it? Stop playing dumb and get chomping. Fine work, Max. Now we've got more full woolly mammoth hair than we'll ever need, and we've learned an important lesson. Yeah, the woolly mammoths died of embarrassment. 
Hi, I'm Wally the Woolly Mammoth. I may be extinct now, but during the Ice Age, I was king of the mammals. Hi, I'm Wally the Woolly Mammoth. Hi, my name is Rex, the Thunder Lizard. During the late Jurassic period, I was king of the dinosaurs. As you can see, my tiny forearms are quite useless. But I more than make up for it with my powerful tail. My mus- Hi, my name- I can't take it anywhere. We finally got the tooth. The whole tooth? Nothing but. This place evokes a sense of wonder. You have to wonder. I can't remember the last time I saw so much tar. Me neither, but my long-term memory is virtually non-existent. I expected more crowds up here in line. Not so much in here. Abe's got the best nose. How can you take this smell? After a while, your nose will go numb and you won't care. Trust me. We're in law enforcement. How much would you charge us to use the bungees? Enthusiastic law enforcement. I'd let you go anytime. I'm partial to dog and bunny teams. That's weird. Works for me. Bye. So long, cutie. Quit that. So, what do you think? It fits you just fine. Ooh, stand back. She may pounce. It's a danger I face every day. So, Max, what do you think? A regular 007. Are you sure? Clint, baby, would be nervous. But get moving. I'm beginning to think you're stalling. Clint. Baby. Who's stalling? I'm just waiting for my buddy to come here and check out this spectacular view.
get off. And stay out. It says, give us Nielgitni. Close enough for jazz. Let's go. Sounds like some kind of shindig. It's the event of the century. How's the band? Pretty happy as far as I can tell. What's up in there? Big time Bigfoot party. Stop. What's up? Only Sasquatches and their dates are allowed on the convention floor. Here. Great. Really great. I owe you guys. Okay, I've attached Conroy Bumpus' toupee to the Stiltwalker's costume. Now the costume is covered with tar. Now we've got a Stiltwalker's costume covered with tar and faux woolly mammoth hair. I can't use these things together. I had no one to call. Call me! Call me! You'd have to get cellular. I'm pixular. It's better than cellular. That's bad, Max. Really bad. Who cares? I'm cute! Jeez. I guess we could try it on. Hmm. Hey, that's a downright nice Sasquatch costume. I'll let you guys in with that one. Looks like something important's happening. Hundreds of years ago, it was becoming apparent that our time was running out. Yet we were slow to heed the warnings of impending doom. The seemingly slow encroachment of mankind and all that his many living styles entail seemed like a vague and distant problem. A problem for future generations of Yeti to solve. Blithely, we sat back, ignoring our own inner call for action. Tradition and the status quo were our excuses for complacency. The certainty of not just losing our way of life, but possibly our very lives. And the demise of our entire race is now becoming a reality. A reality we can no longer choose to ignore. As it turns out, the humans and their technology are moving faster than we are. Much faster than we had anticipated. And so, we now face the final crisis. Unless we pull together, not just acknowledging the need for change, but embracing change not just with our hearts and our minds, but with our actions, we will fall behind, moving backward into extinction. Well, back to the music. Have you seen Bruno around? I haven't seen the dude since he rescued me. I hear he's hiding out from a crazy bear and bunny who want to drag him off to an evil carnival. Bear? What was that? Gas. Have you heard from Trixie? I guess she's hiding out with Bruno. Have you seen Conroy Bumpus around here? Is he the guy that coined the phrase, Hang Ten? No, he's a country western star going berserk. Ooh, heinous. So where are all the bodacious Bigfoot babes? Take it easy, Max. You don't even like girls. I don't? Dude, are you like having an argument with your belly button? Uh... 
No. Your appetite's bigger than mine. Hey, man, if you'd spent the past eight years on a bread and water diet, you'd be scarfing down everything in sight too, dude. So, fellow smelly woodland creature, where have you been hiding for the past few years? Hiding? Dude, I've spent the last eight years manacled to a dunking booth. If Bruno and his girlfriend hadn't rescued me, I'd still be there. I'll let you get back to your food. Well, hello, dude. One does not cut in on a Bigfoot. Hey, Slats! What is it, Grasshopper? Has Bruno shown up yet? Keep your voice down. Bruno's involved in a top-secret reconnaissance mission to the alien's home planet. Of course. How silly of me to forget. Have you seen Bruno's girlfriend anywhere? She's helping Bruno contact the aliens. Oh, yeah. You haven't run into Conroy Bumpus, have you? No, but I know how to deal with him. He has a near-fatal vulnerability to ice, like all beings from the evil planet Snargton. We'll keep that in mind. Aren't you the abominable, you know, bubble, Never mind. Didn't we meet last summer in Cancun? I don't think so. I was hanging upside down in a block of ice last summer. How'd that happen? Oh, the usual. I was strolling in the Andes, minding my own business, when some idiot mountain climber comes along and yells, Hey, it's the abominable snowman. Next thing I know, there's an avalanche, and I'm covered in 20 feet of snow. When I wake up, I'm hanging upside down in an ice block. It's someplace called the Mystery Vortex. We'll catch you later. Figure of speech. Hubba hubba hubba! Whose little big foot are you? Vanuatu's! Vanuahu? Vanuatu! The Bigfoot chief! The guy who just gave that speech! My husband! Mm. Don't sweat it, Junior! If I had a tree for every time a teenage Bigfoot's made a drunken pass at me, we surely wouldn't be in the mess we're in today. Not really. Have you seen Bruno? Bruno? Why, me and Mr. V have known little Bruno since he was knee-high to a pig. Salt of the earth Bruno is. Nicest, most generous Bigfoot you'll ever meet. Dumb as a post, of course, but generous. Why, just the other day I was talking to my manicurist, Kimmy, and I said, Kimmy, that Bruno has got to be the dumbest creature to ever walk the surface of the planet. And then she said, yada yada yada, bow bow bow, bow bow bow, oogly oogly oogly. Of course, I just said, yada yada yada. Have you seen Trixie around here? Trixie? Nice girl, wonderful human being. Complete fashion victim, of course, but so pleasant. Just last week, I was talking to Katie, my color consultant, and I said, Katie, that Trixie girl wouldn't know a Bernoose from a sarong if her life depended on it. And then she said, yada yada yada. You haven't seen Conroy Bumpus sneaking around, have you? Internationally renowned country western superstar Conroy Bumpus? I've got all his albums. He's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I'd say he's the most gifted entertainer of the 20th century. He's an immoral cretin, of course, but boy, can he sing. I was talking to my chiropractor, Karen, just last month, and I said, Karen, that despicable Conroy Bumpus sure has got a pretty voice. And then she said, Wapita, wapita, wapita. Gee, your hair smells terrific. You should talk to my hair care specialist, Janet. She does marvelous work. Why, just last autumn, she was soaking my head and I said, Janet, you're just about the best hair care specialist I've ever known. So she said, What, what do you think about the pressing Bigfoot issues of the day? God, I can't believe I lived long enough to hear you say that. The answers were all there in my husband's speech. Pull together. Embrace change. Avoid extinction. And if that doesn't work, we'll eat all the humans. 
Adieu. Don't be a stranger. Stop. Sorry, hon. Only Yeti elders are allowed in the pool area. Well, 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 a Bigfoot. Sure is a scrawny feller. A Bigfoot in the hand is worth two in the bush, Lee Harvey. Uh, sorry, boss. Think nothing of it, old chap. Now, be a good lad and pop off to the bus and get the net. Yes, sir, Mr. Bumpus. I'd probably feel more threatened if I wasn't so hungry. You'll be well fed in my menagerie. Why do you persecute harmless Bigfoots? Harmless? Harmless? I'll have you know my parents were killed by a rabid Bigfoot. Really? Well, no. Actually, I'm just a warped, evil person who gets his jollies torturing cute woodland creatures. Well, that's a valid motivation, too. Where'd you get that British accent, anyway? I'm originally from Liverpool, twit. You. I'm not really a Bigfoot, you know. Pull the other one. Look, behind you, a three-headed monkey. Nice try. Where'd you get the extra toupee? I'm only gonna say this once, so listen closely. I don't wear a toupee. You'll never get away with this. Ooh, I'm so scared. Maybe this will convince you that I'm not a Bigfoot. You again? I left the net back in Bumpusville. Forget the net. We're gonna disguise ourselves as a Bigfoot. Why? So we can infiltrate their ranks, learn their ways, and pick them off at our leisure. Oh. And no funny stuff, dog boy. Yeah. Hey. I wouldn't move if I were you. Yeah. Hey, Max, why don't you make yourself useful? That was fun. Now future generations will be able to enjoy his atonal warblings. Are there any more shrimp balls back here? Who, who are you? We're the freelance police. We just saved your collective hash. Really? Then I guess it'd be okay to make you honorary Yeti chiefs. Walk this way. Can I have your attention, please? Although it's our tradition to allow only Bigfoots and their dates to these gatherings, these two have shown themselves worthy of our gratitude and our trust. These are a naive people. And so I'm granting them the title of Honorary Bigfoot Chief. So don't mess with them. That's it? Honorary Bigfoot Chief? Where's the cash? We don't want Bigfoot money, Max. It's probably made of tree bark or something. I know, but it's the principle of the thing. You may now wander freely about the convention floor without concern for your health. Gee, thanks. Think nothing of it. Follow me. Since you have proven yourselves to be friends of the Yeti, I have brought you here to share in our biggest secret. These great totem poles have been gathered from across the world and passed down from generation to generation of Bigfoots. Like fruitcake. We believe they hold the answer to our ultimate salvation. But the secret of their purpose is a riddle we've been unable to fathom. Sounds heavy. Like fruitcake. It's real heavy. Bruno. Like fruitcake. Why aren't you at the party? Who can party while their world comes to an end? Most of your mange-ridden brethren, apparently. I told you it was a bad idea to spike the punch. I thought it would loosen up everyone's imagination. No wonder we're facing extinction. 
Okay, guys, here's the situation. The Bigfoot way of life is rapidly going down the tubes. These totem poles might be able to save us, but A, we don't know what they mean, B, most of us have been partying too much to figure out what they mean, and C, we Bigfoots have a hard time operating in public, if you know what I mean. We wouldn't normally be asking for help, but we're desperate. Well, that's how we get most of our gigs, so why not? Great. Why don't you three get cracking on the totem poles? I'm going to the hot tub. What is this? Some kind of tornado? Dentistry? A patron saint of Bigfoots? Looks like a before and after shot. Where's my John Muir vegetable? Here you go, son. A zucchini squash that looks just like John Muir. Gee, thanks, man. Thanks. Bye. Take a leg, Max. Could you bend this? Sure. Just let me finish this one. Let's see it. Hmm. How's that? Great. That seems to have gotten the cork off. Shall we raise a toast to nuclear disarmament? With this poison? Don't be silly. That seems to have capped the snow globe. Can we try the vortex? Step right in.
Neat! It's an empty snow globe with a cork stopper. Can we try the vortex? Step right in! Wow, the snow globe actually sucked in the pseudo-mystical energies of the mystery vortex. I was hoping something like that would happen. I think I figured out one of the totem poles. Let me see. A handheld vortex. Good thinking. Thinking had nothing to do with it. Hey, Chiefy Poo. I think I figured out one of those baffling totem poles. A genuine dinosaur tooth. I figured it might be something like that. Did he say genuine? I believe we've deduced the secret of one of your totem poles. Hit me! Combination of man and nature. Inventive. Is it soup yet? Hey, Mr. Chief, we found something that might tie into your totem poles. Yeah, w what is it? A 
hair growth tonic. Very resourceful. We just like stealing pillows. Well, that should do it, right? Nothing's happening, Sam. What's the story, Pops? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure you got the ingredients right, but... Of course. How silly of me. What? In order for the spell to work, we need a living Bigfoot sacrifice. It'd be a shame to lose one of these furry fellas, don't you think? Wait, I've got an idea, and it doesn't require high explosives. Wait here. While he's gone, I'll go see if any of the Bigfoots wants to off themselves for the greater good. was one heck of an impressive display. And actually highly destructive to boot. Goodbye, Sam and Max. I'm not sure how I could ever thank you, so I guess I won't. Will you and Trixie be heading back into the forest to live an idyllic nature-oriented existence together? Hell no. We're going to Vegas to get hitched. If it hasn't been trashed by all this crazy redwood nonsense. We want to be in a place where we can sort of blend in. Live our lives. Maybe even raise a family. Ew. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, you nutsy, primitive man-beast, you. You boys should be proud of what you've helped us achieve here today. You mean the wholesale destruction of the symbols of modern civilization in the western United States? You bet we are. Do we win a prize? Well, oh, why not? This medallion has been a part of my family for untold generations. Wear it in good health. Thanks, Chief. Max loves cheap sentiment. Mmm! -mm. Foil covered chocolatey goodness! What's wrong, Sam? I don't think the wizard has anything in that bag for me. Well, I could give you my ritual headdress that I bought at Snucky's last week. I appreciate the gesture, but I've already got a hat. Well, that's fine, too. Farewell, Sam and Max. Remember, though the night be dark, the dawn yet shall awaken and annoy you. Have a nice day. I'll miss that old rascal. I'll miss the way he smelled like a bag full of damp hamster shavings. Just like Grandpa. Hey, we forgot to get paid. Don't worry, little buddy. I've got it all covered. I hope you're happy. With those idiots on the case, we'll probably never see Bruno again. Oh, lighten up, Burl. Hey, they're back! Did you find Bruno? Of course. Bruno! Bruno! How can we ever repay you? The blank looks on your faces are the only reward we need. That and a big fat check. Would you settle for 3,000 skee-ball tickets? Close enough. Let's go, Max. You know, Max? I can't help thinking that we've foolishly tampered with the fragile inner mechanisms of this little spaceship we call Earth. Gosh, Sam, if a few hundred years of civilization have to be total just to ensure that a bunch of smelly quasi-human creatures have a safe haven for their disgusting lifestyles, then so be it! You crack me up, little buddy. Burl, did Bruno always have four arms? <laughs>